What's up folks? We are starting to work on a new release of the Quality of Life dashboard. Let me fix that. We are starting to think about doing some work for a new release of the Quality of Life dashboard. And the big feature of this is going to be a very different layout. It's going to be a card-based multiple variable layout. So you will be able to see more than one variable at the same time. And I'm going to do my best so that you can use this with your current dashboard data configuration. And uh, it should just work. Trademark never does, but I'm going to try to make it work. Uh, this is a very different kind of layout for me. Uh, I usually... <sighs> you hope as a designer and a developer, you know the best way to lay stuff out. And that's how you lay it out. When you have an interface like this, you're relying on the website user to know the best way to lay things out. And that's usually a terrible idea. But in this case, it's absolutely vital to have this functionality. And, and you'll see why when I show you the layout. When I do this kind of stuff, it usually starts out on paper and pencil in a sketch that I would understand but anybody else would think are the ravings of a troubled mind. When I need to communicate that to other people, I'll do that in Inkscape. And what I use is something by created by Banjit Carve. Thank you very much. He's got a couple really good posts on using Inkscape for UI design, and he also has a template you can use. And the template is essentially a web browser shape, a page set up to like a 1080p, and some basic elements in what their size would be at about 1080p. And you can just duplicate these and drag and drop and use your color dropper to pick, set up whatever color palette you want and whatever fonts you want and make a layout. So thank you very much, Mandit. I hope I didn't murder your name for that. And I'll link to that in the notes. This is the basic idea of what the dashboard would look like. And you would have multiple metrics, as many as you want, essentially. And one of them would be focused, and that one would look like this. It would see the charts and the map at the same time. The map would be interactive. You'd also get the, the data table you see now on the dashboard for whatever you have selected, etc. And the smaller ones, what they would have is those the graphics, the charts and the map, would be on a carousel. And the map would be zoomed out to full scale and non-interactive. So essentially for the smaller ones, you can have the multi-smaller map kind of layout, which makes it easier to compare general trends. Then how you would arrange these is you could just drag and drop them to rearrange them. And whatever you drag to the big spot will get the big spot treatment. And that's the general idea. And it would hopefully be a lot cleaner layout. We're going to, like half the current dashboard is metadata, which if you're into metadata, I'm sorry, but no one else is. So we're going to hide some of that away that you can get to it through an interaction. So it should be a much cleaner layout as well. Now this layout is a lot different, as I said, from what I usually build. So. After I get a design, I usually like to wireframe it in so I can see the frame of where everything is going to go. And this is so unusual, I didn't want to do this as part of working on some code. Plus, we're not ready to work it. Again, we're just thinking about doing work at this point. I will do that sort of thing in a scratch area. And in this case, I use CodePen, which is awesome. And this is what it looks like. And it's responsive, so things will rearrange themselves as they need to. And you can drag, it's already mixed because I've been dragging stuff around, but it starts out in a regular order. And you can drag stuff around to change the order. And it shows you some highlighting to show where you're dragging and dropping stuff to. So, put this back <laughs> in the right order. 
That's the interface. Now, how did I make this? This is this is the only interesting part of this video, unless you're just interested in future quality of life updates. How I made this is the layout is using CSS Grid. CSS Grid for this kind of thing is perfect. It allows you to flow stuff around so you can have you know, multiple levels of stuff that come out correctly and space correctly. And it also has an order property, just like Flexbox does, so you can specify the order elements should appear in. And we're gonna use that order uh, style property to rearrange stuff via drag and drop. So let me make this code a little bigger just for now so you can see what we got going here. Here is the HTML, and we just have a grid container that contains our grid. And with grid, the first level elements of the grid container participate in the grid rules. So each one of these divs after here, hey, we don't need that anymore. Each one of these after here, these first level divs are participating in the grid and each one has a order property, order style property. And it's just one, two, three, four, five for what we have out there. Uh, the first item in the grid also has this grid first class and that tells it to be essentially the size of twice the others width and height plus the grid spacing. That's how we get this big number one here. That's also going to be useful for when we want to do something like style something differently, uh, like our slideshow or our gallery slider for the, the graphics on the smaller items. Well, if it has this grid first, we'll break it out of that gallery and it will be just spaced out however we want it to be. All right, CSS. Pretty straightforward for the grid. It's got you know template rows and columns and grid gap and a little margin to, so it's not hitting the edges of the body. Uh, each grid item has, uh, has a min height, but the important thing is the border radius. The border radius is a uh, needs to be consistent between the interior item, which will be where we put our quality of life stuff, but it's where the big number is here right now that's going to be what gets dragged. So we want to make sure the border radius for the container and what's being dragged are going to be the same. Now, the first element in our grid, again, this is where we give it the, make it twice as big width and height of the other ones. And that's really the whole thing setting up this grid. CSS grid is, is kind of awesome. I tend to use Flexbox more just because of the kind of layouts I do, but it's, it's kind of awesome. So, on to JavaScript, the fun stuff. We've got really two, two groups of uh, cats we're dealing with here. We have the draggers, and those are the interior div items that have the number in it. And you notice they have this draggable HTML attribute set to true. And you can do that to any attribute in HTML5, it makes it true. Of course, if you drag it, once you drop it, Nothing's going to happen unless you specify what you want to happen in JavaScript. But all five of these interior guys are draggable. So for each one of those draggers, we say on drag start, we want to set some data that's going to be passed to where it gets dropped to. And here we're just taking the style, the order of the parent. So this number two, div draggable number two, the parent has an order of two. So that number two is going to get passed to whatever we drop this thing onto. Neat, huh? Well, that's for the draggers, simple enough. The droppers, where we're gonna drop stuff, which are the catchers here, draggers and catchers. I, I you know, I name things based on things. So the catchers, for each one, when something gets drugged in, first we're going to prevent anything of the regular stuff that might happen there from happening. We're going to add this list, this class called hovering. What that does is the 
grid item hovering, the subgrid, which is our dragger, is going to get a background color and a dashed border. So we can see where we're going. So that's going to get added on drag over and it's going to get removed on drag leave. Do you hear that? It's one of my crazy cats. What do you want, cat? I'm, I'm YouTubing. You have food? I pet you earlier. Eh, cats, man. All right, on drop, this is where the real magic is going to happen. When we drop it, first we're going to select the, uh, we're going to get that data we transferred in, which is the number of the order, the order number. And we're going to use that to select the parent of what we're, we drug. And we're going to use this with a query selector and we're going to use this style and get the order that was that number. Perfect. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to get the numbers. Oh, come here, you stupid cat. You want to say anything to YouTube? There could be dozens of people watching. Say hi. And now you're shy. Yeah, you're goofball. Okay. So we're going to get the number that is the order number of the catcher and what we dragged. Now we're going to do a loop through all the catchers and we're going to remove anything, remove any grid first uh, class, which is the big class. And then this is how we are going to bump stuff up or down as needed. If we drag this three over to the one spot, one and two order needs to be bumped up. If we drag this one over to the three, three and two need to be bumped down. And this is where we do that. We're essentially just depending on where it occurred in the order, we're going to bump those numbers up or down. So once we're done with that, what we're dragging, will get the order number of wherever we drug it to. And then whatever ended up with order number one is going to get that grid first class. Then we remove the hovering. So that is the JavaScript. So when we move this three down, it's going to bump one and two up and have three get that grid first class. If we move three back down, it's going to bump one and two back down. And number one is going to end up in the one spot. So it's going to get that grid first class and be nice and big. And that is how I'm going to handle that draggy, droppy, rearrangey layout stuff. It was a kind of interesting problem to work through because this isn't the only time I've done draggy, droppy type stuff is when I need to let you upload something. Uh, I haven't done it this way before. Well, it worked out so it's not a terrible amount of code and with the highlighting and stuff, works out pretty great. Anyway, I hope you found that useful and interesting. And it's, a, it's an interesting way to use CSS grid and the order property and HTML5 drag and drop to move things around. And it's, we're gonna, we're, we're working on, or thinking, we're starting the thinking about working process on something like this for the quality of life. And the idea will be uh, you could just plug this in with your data configuration and it should just, just work maybe. Trademark, possibly. I will catch you later, bye-bye.